Hey, I'm Billy Drain from Miller Industries, and today we're joined by Scott Furr and Jason Lambert of the Cummins Engine Company. They're going to share with us how to properly service the fuel filter system in the Cummins X15 engine. Thank you, Billy. Today we will be demonstrating on the Peterbilt 389 chassis. It's very important to make sure that you have the correct personal protective equipment, such as your gloves and safety glasses. And make sure you follow local, state, federal, and environmental rules and regulations when handling hazardous materials such as diesel fuel. Another quick tip is to always make sure that you clean around the filter housing before starting the process. You'll want to do this type of job in a shop to cut down on any debris that may be flying around. So when doing this procedure, it's important that you have all of your tools, your spill containment, your filter tools, your filters, and then your basin for your diesel fuel. And now I'm going to turn it over to Scott Furr who is going to demonstrate the proper procedures for changing the fuel filters on this system. Thank you, Jason. To begin, you want to disconnect the batteries to the vehicle. To do this, we want to remove the battery cables. If the vehicle is equipped with a master disconnect switch, you can use it as well. If your shop practices lockout tagout, you also want to employ those lockout tagout devices. One thing you may want to do to create some more work room is to rotate this tire to the right. To begin the service process for the stage one fuel filter, we'll begin by removing the OEM fuel heater connection. For this next step, you might need a pocket screwdriver. We're going to remove the water and fuel sensor connector. This connector has a primary and a secondary lock. You'll want to slide the red primary lock mechanism down to allow you to be able to press and release the secondary lock mechanism. You may find it helpful to use a bungee cord to secure the wiring harnesses back out of the way. Next, we're going to use a drain pan and I'm going to put some absorbent material in it to, to help avoid splashing. Position the drain pan beneath the stage one fuel filter. Next, we're going to be loosening the drain valve to evacuate the fuel filter. Once the fuel is drained from the filter housing, close the drain valve. Next, we're going to be removing the filter housing bowl. This vehicle is equipped with a Packar branded Stage 1 fuel filter. So we'll be using the specific Packar wrench to loosen the bowl. We're going to loosen the Stage 1 filter bowl by rotating it clockwise with this special tool. And then we will get it loose, we'll unscrew it by hand, and then we will pour any residual fuel that's left in the bottom of the bowl into our drain pan. Next, I'm going to dispose of my fuel filter in my drain pan, dump any residual fuel out into the drain pan. Something you may want to consider doing is using some electrical contact cleaner to clean the interior of the bowl of any debris that is settled in the bottom. Next, we're going to remove the old O-ring seal. You may use a pocket screwdriver for this. And discard it. The filter service kit comes with a replacement O-ring seal. We'll install that now. I ran a screwdriver around the O-ring after I placed it in its seal groove. Just in case it was twisted, it would allow itself to untwist. We want to lubricate the O-ring with either a little engine oil or clean diesel fuel. Next, we're going to use a lint-free towel to clean the O-ring seal area of the Stage 1 fuel filter housing and install the replacement fuel filter element. 
we're going to pre-fill our fuel filter bowl to approximately halfway. Now that we've pre-filled our bowl, we're going to install it onto the filter housing by sliding it up onto the filter we installed earlier and turning it counterclockwise until the bowl is seated. Next we'll use the special wrench to tighten the bowl to 220 to 310 inch pounds or until snug. Take care not to rotate the bowl past when it stops. Our last step is to reconnect the fuel heater and the water and fuel sensor. Next we're going to service the own engine stage 2 fuel filter. Before we begin, we want to be careful to clean around the area where the fuel filter resides. Failing to clean around this area may result in dirt contamination of the replacement fuel filter. Now that we've cleaned around the general area of where the stage two fuel filter is located on the engine, we're going to use the same drain pan that we had prior and position it underneath the fuel filter because there will be some residual fuel that drains out and we want to be sure and collect that. To loosen this fuel filter, we're going to use a filter wrench, or in this case, I'm going to use a set of filter pliers to loosen the fuel filter by rotating it clockwise. Now that we've got the filter loosened with our wrench, I'm going to remove it by hand and lower it down into my drain pan. And now that the filter has been removed, we're going to wipe around the filter gasket area and clean up any fuel spillage. Next, we have our replacement fuel filter. We'll be installing this fuel filter dry per Cummins recommendations. However, please be aware that this filter is supplied with a plug in the middle to allow you to pre-fill it in case you have an application where you don't have an electric lift pump. Our application has an electric lift pump, so we'll be following Cummins protocol by installing this fuel filter without pre-filling it. However, prior to installation of the filter, we'll be lubricating this gasket, removing this plug, lubricating this gasket, and then installing our filter. Now that we have our replacement fuel filter ready for installation, we're going to be installing the fuel filter onto the fuel filter head. We're going to tighten it until the gasket makes contact with the filter base. Once the gasket makes contact with the filter base, we're going to use these witness marks printed on the filter housing themselves. In this example, if witness mark D is in our point of view, we will rotate the filter an additional three quarters of a turn until witness mark A is in our point of view, ensuring that we have the filter properly tightened. We want to reconnect the battery cables after we complete the service. Or turn on the master battery disconnect switch. The last step in our fuel filter service process is we're going to cycle the key switch to allow the engine's electric lift pump to run. To purge the air out of the fuel system. We'll be doing this three to four times as necessary.
Now that we've primed the fuel system, we're going to crank the engine for up to a maximum of 15 seconds. If the engine fails to start, we'll cycle the key switch back to the off position and then back to the on position, allowing the lift pump to run through its cycle once more. Then we'll crank the engine again until it starts. Scott, Jason, thank you for demonstrating that. And thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our news feed to get all the latest tips and tricks from Miller Industries. This video is for product demonstration purposes only and is not intended for training or instructional purposes. Situations vary and operators should rely on their own professional knowledge and safety procedures when conducting actual recoveries. Miller Industries, the world leader in towing and recovery equipment.